your Bibles to the book of Acts chapter number 4. Acts chapter number 4. We were in Acts this morning. We were in Acts this evening. Not necessarily correlating to one another. Amen. But uh, trusting the Lord to help us in His Word. Amen. Hopefully you found encouragement this morning. I talked about, if you weren't here, I talked about if we find ourselves down, which we will, what do we do? Amen. How do we get back up? Amen. It's so important that we do get back up. Some folks seem to fall and never be able to get themselves back up. Back up. But we talked about uh, what, what, uh, what, what the Lord showed us through the life of the Apostle Paul. That because of the conversion of Paul, he knew he was converted. Amen. It helped him get back up because of his com uh, com commitment, because of his courage. Amen. He was able to get back up. Amen. We have to be courageous as believers. Amen. It will help us. We're going to look at that courage a little bit this evening, even as we look at the Word of God. And uh, I feel like tonight's message, if you will allow the Spirit of God to touch you and speak to you, tonight's message will be a life-changing message for you. I want to look at tonight conviction. Conviction. I think if there's something that the church is missing, it is the conviction of the Holy Ghost in our lives. What are convictions? You know, yesteryear we used to hear a lot of preaching about that. We don't hear it the way that we do once a day. So I want to look at convictions and what that means and how that should be applicable in our life. Amen. We may claim that our convictions are a private matter, but I need to tell you they are constantly on display, even if they are a private matter. Amen. Because we will live them out every day in our actions because God has given us standards and God has given us principles from His Word. Amen. That is a guide to us. They motivate us. Uh, they will protect us. And uh, our, our, our convictions have a powerful influence on us. And because they, they, they contribute to us living a righteous life, God is looking for those who live holy. I said God is looking for those who live holy. Amen. It's not haphazard. Amen. Uh, God is looking for those who live a holy life before Him. Amen. The reason of the cross is because He died for us. Because He loved us. And to bring righteousness. But it was also a gateway for the Holy Ghost to come and to help us live righteous before God Almighty. Because we can't do it on our own. Amen. We need the help of the Holy Ghost in our life to live righteous. And so uh, God wants us to be holy. Uh, we talked about sanctification many times and that it is a definite work. God washes and cleanses us, but it is a progressive work as we continue to grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so as we grow, the element of our growth is going to be convictions. Convictions. What are they? Help me understand them. How do, I, how do I define them with boundaries in my mind and in my life? How does God uh, 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 emboss those convictions upon me? And how do I live them to best honor God? So in Acts chapter number 4, we read about Peter and John, and they're on fire for God. Uh, they are, they, 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 they uh, uh, have been filled with the Holy Ghost in this once timid Peter. Now we see him becoming the rock. We see him who was once wishy-washy and uncertain and unsure, even though maybe he was boisterous in his personality, he was still uh, 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 uncertain in his convictions with God. But the Holy Ghost made a difference in his life. Amen. He had an experience of seeing a resurrected Savior. Amen. He had an experience with the Holy Ghost. Amen. That all of a sudden in his life, he gets conviction. And God begins to work and move in and through him. 
So here it is that, 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 that they're seeing uh, men and women that, that are healed. And so jumping into verse number 13, the Bible says, Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and, and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. Here are these men that are preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. They've not been to a rabbinical school. They've, they've not been to a teaching school. But it was evident that God was with them. Amen. They had seen, uh, they had the knowledge that they had been with Jesus. They, the, the knowledge they had, the experience, the power of God. And they've not been to, 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 to any type of institution or, or, or special training. Amen. God had worked and moved in their life. This is not to minimize education, but it's also to go to show you the education is not the greatest tool that we need. It is a relationship with God. It is the ministry of the Holy Ghost in our life, and every one of us can have it. They did learn at the feet of Jesus. They were students. And so the Bible goes on down to say, and beholding the man which was healed standing with them, what a, what a, what a beautiful sight, amen, that they could not say anything against, uh, against it. Here's the evidence. Here's the man that's been healed. And we, we see that, that how awesome is this, that God has healed the, the, this man. And when they had commanded them to go aside out of the council, they conferred among themselves, saying, What shall we do to these men? For it is indeed no, a notable miracle uh, uh, has been done by, by them as manifest uh, to all who dwell in Jerusalem. And we cannot deny it. There's no denying that this miracle has happened. Uh, but we don't want it to spread any farther among the people. Uh, we've got to straightly uh, threaten them and speak uh, henceforth uh, to no man in, his, in this name. And they called them and they commanded them to speak, uh, not to speak at all or teach in the name of Jesus. And Peter and John answered and said unto them, Whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you uh, uh, more than unto God, judge ye, for we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. Amen. It is our conviction. I don't care what you say, whether it be right or whether it be wrong, we cannot stop but to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with others. Do you know what Peter and John was saying? They were saying, we are so persuaded. We are so convicted. I know it's your order from legislation, but we can't do it. We, 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 we have a conviction that overrides its greater. We've got to share Jesus Christ. There are two types of people. Two types of Christians. Those that cannot help but to speak about things and those who can't speak. You know what the difference is? Those who have conviction and those who don't have conviction. So I want to talk about Conviction. Conviction. Here they are. They're, 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 they're thrown in jail for healing a lame man. They're warned not to speak or, or to teach anything else in the name of Jesus. And, and, and they say whether it's right in the sight of God to give heed to you rather than to God. Uh, you be the judge. But we can't help but to stop talking about Jesus. So... Conviction, when we look at that word, the word can be defined in a few different ways. It, 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 a conviction is a guilty verdict that's handed down by a court because of, uh, 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 of a conviction of a, of a crime. It is a firmly held belief as in the certainty that Christ is the resurrected Son of God and is the only way to heaven. Amen. It is that conviction that, that you know Jesus Christ is the only way. And then it's a feeling of guilt, conviction that is given by the Holy Ghost. Such as we look at John chapter number 16. Let me just read that. John chapter number 16, verse number 8. The Word of God says, And when here the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God, is come, He will reprove or He will convict the world of sin. The Holy Ghost gives conviction. 
So I want to talk about that conviction where, where, where the Spirit of God works and moves in our life and through the Word of God and we are completely under the understanding that this is what God requires. Let me tell you, the church needs to start having some convictions. Amen? I said the church needs to start having some convictions. Amen. We as believers should have some conviction. Amen. That we don't stand idly by. Amen. But we are willing to speak for Jesus Christ. How can we not speak but the truth of Jesus Christ? Amen. It is our conviction. So let's look at something before we even go any further. Amen. And I don't want to set up upside anyone's apple cart. But there is a big difference between preferences and convictions. Amen. Big difference between preferences and convictions. A preference is changeable and may vary throughout someone's life. life. You may, you, you, you know, I, I'm not a tangent type fellow preacher. You probably have noticed that uh, from, from me. I am a preacher of the truth of the Word of God. Amen. Because preferences will change throughout a lifetime. There may be things that you prefer. There may be things that you like. And, 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 and maybe early on in your life, you struggle a little bit. Or maybe even now, struggle between preference and conviction. Amen. But preferences, uh, uh, they're something that you, you believe at the present, but you could be convinced of otherwise uh, 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 somewhere down the road if something seems more beneficial. So preferences really aren't something that we can build the foundation of our lives upon because they really depend upon circumstance. There are some things that I prefer in my life that maybe I didn't prefer years ago. Amen. But they are my prefer they're not really convictions, but I just prefer. Amen. So, so when I look at that, I, 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 you know, they're easily uh, able to be abandoned if I'm convinced otherwise. Amen. Or, or in the face of, uh, of opposition, they really don't matter to preferences. You may say, you may say, I don't like to wear green. I prefer not to wear green. That may be your preference, but, and I'm using a simple illustration, but you know what? You could be convinced otherwise if, 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 you're, uh, if, if, if your spouse told you, boy, it makes you look better and more youthful and uh, does so much when you wear green. And so you can be convinced otherwise. Amen. There are things that you can be convinced of. Uh, I'm just going to leave it there before I go down more rapid trails. But then when we come to convictions, it is a solid, immovable belief based upon the truth of God's Word that you have confidence in that this is not movable. This is absolute truth, and I'm going to stand for it regardless <coughs> of what the consequences are, because it is truth. It's truth. And so convictions not only shape what we believe, but convictions can also and will, amen, shape how we live and how we die. Here is Peter and John, and they said, listen, you can say whatever you want that we can't preach in the name of Jesus Christ. You, we can't talk about it, but it is our conviction. This is the way that we live, and if it be, this will be the way that we die, because this is our conviction. It wasn't just a preference, amen. It was their conviction. And so it provided direction in a solid, straight line, and they were not going to veer off the track, because this is where we we are and this is how we live. I'm talking about a church that needs to stop saying well this is our preference amen and, and stop being so wishy-washy and get into the word of God and say this is my conviction. This is what God says and I will live and I will die by the boundaries of these lines and I will not veer off. Amen. 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 The characteristics of persons with conviction is to be like Peter and John 
who said it doesn't matter. We are staying within the boundaries of our convictions. Amen. I'm not going to be someone who preaches my preference to you. Amen. But we are still going to preach the blood of Jesus Christ. We're still going to pre preach the cross of Calvary. We are still going to preach a holy and a sanctified life. We are still going to preach on the sanctity of life. We're still going to preach on the sanctity of marriage. We're still going to preach on the relationship of one uh, a man with one woman. Amen. I define within marriage because those aren't just preferences. Those are convictions. Right. Amen. 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 So those are the things that we are standing up against even right now in our society and politically. Amen. There are other things that we should be standing up for that is right. Amen. That we believe in Pentecost. It should be a conviction. Amen. We believe in the blood of Jesus Christ saving lives and the confession of sins and the repenting and the, the, that, that of accepting Jesus Christ as your Savior and moving away from the old lifestyle. Amen. And becoming that new person in Christ who God has designed you to be and following after Him. It's so important that we have conviction in our life. Not just a preference. Not just a preference, but a conviction. What do convictions do for us? It gives us a sense of purpose of who we are as believers. When we are convicted, we know where we're headed. <coughs> and we know the defined path that we're walking. And we're pursuing those things that identify us in Jesus Christ. The liar doesn't lie anymore. The cheater doesn't cheat anymore. The dishonest person, amen, is not dishonest, but lives within the boundaries of holy living because they want to honor God. Our tongue no longer talks the way it used to talk, but we, will, we, we, are, we are defined by convictions of, of how we're going to talk and how we're going to walk and where we're going to live. Our character is when no one else is around. It is still lived by the conviction of Jesus Christ that we want to honor Him with our life. Talking about getting back to convictions. You see, instead of going with the crowd and seeking profit and seeking pleasure, we seek to stand by the standards of God's Word and seeking His will and living within righteousness, even as we're in a sinful culture. Not only will it give us a sense of purpose, but it gives us strength and faith in God. It enables us to live our convictions without compromise. Here is Peter and John, and here they are threatened with jail. That's not the worst place I want to live my life. That's not where I want to be. I don't want those repercussions. But they said, our faith in God is greater than the current threat that is at hand. I'm telling you, our country is quickly shifting. And if we don't have a church that is full of conviction, amen, we are going to fall for anything. The mark of the beast will look real good because we don't have a conviction in our life. But it's time that we as a church stand up for our conviction. Amen. I said this morning that the thing that helped Paul get up was, was courage. Amen. And when we have convictions, it's easy to stand uh, for those convictions. Uh, you, uh, it's easy to stand when we're among like-minded people. We can stand and say a lot of things about Christ and church. Amen. But Monday, when, when we're separated from other believers, amen, where we're, we're the walls of the church aren't what surround us anymore, we're faced with the opposition of a world uh, that, that, that is wicked. Uh, how do we stand? Amen. Uh, when they think that we're narrow-minded, when we're, we're foolish, amen, we can sing that song, well, I'll stand for Jesus and let the world go by because we we have conviction. It's not just a preference, but we've been convicted by the Holy Ghost, amen, and by the Word of God. And it's a, it's, it's a path that we're not going to be veering off of. Amen. Conviction. Conviction. The big picture. When we're surrounded by our conviction, amen, we look and we see 
the veering off of our conviction that the long-term results are not good. Let me speak from the heart for a moment. How easy it is for moms and dads to let down the standard. But then children lose out with God. You've got to hold to the conviction. How easy it is for a church to be accepting and we love people, but we're not accepting of sin. This is the conviction by which we live. We don't ever want to come to the place where Ichabod is written across the door because we didn't live by conviction. They were just preferences. And they were easily swayed. I want to challenge us tonight. Do we have a conviction of the Holy Ghost working and moving in our life? Or are we easily swayed? Because if we don't have a conviction for the blood of Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Ghost, we will be swayed. And we'll just become another social club where we gather together without the power of God, without the power of prayer, without the power of the Holy Ghost, it takes men and women having a conviction for righteousness. Men and women who have a conviction for what prayer does, honoring prayer, Honoring real worship where we separate the world out. Amen. Where we're convicted where we need that time. Where it's us and God. And God communes with us. And we, uh, we, we worship a holy God who desires our praise. And He falls among us. That needs to be our conviction. Not just our preference. Because our preference will be swayed. It's amazing. The strength that the Holy Ghost gives to us. In Ephesians chapter number 4, verse number 30, the Word of God says, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. Hey Amen. There should be something about us that the Holy Ghost speaks to us through the preaching of the Word, through the anointing of the Spirit, through the, the, the power of the Word of God, through our time in prayer. And the Holy Ghost gives us co a conviction in our life because He draws us apart to live holy. Amen. You know why we don't talk with the crowd? Amen. As they're telling their worldly, carnal, filthy things because the Holy Ghost has pulled us apart. Amen. To live sanctified unto Him. Amen. It's not about this life. Amen. But it's about living our life and the light of eternity for Jesus Christ. Amen. And because we live by those convictions, we don't grieve the Spirit of God. It's not just a preference. That's conviction. Folks have said to me, why do you and your family live that way? It's kind of old time. It's kind of dated. It's because the Spirit of God has spoken conviction to my heart. Conviction. It's not just a preference. It's not just a comfortableness. It's conviction. It's conviction. We need to be convicted of things in our life where it's not just a preference. But God has spoken. And these are the boundaries. And we live our life in them. In John chapter number 14, verse number 26, the Word of God says, But the Comforter, or our Helper, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and, 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 and bring all things to your remembrance. Whatsoever I have said to you. When's the last time that we've allowed the Spirit of God to speak to our hearts? God, what are the boundaries? What is the conviction? I'm done with preferences. I'm done with that. I don't care what your preferences is. I don't care what my preferences are. 
they, they move with time and situations. The connection does not. God, what are the foundations that I can build upon? Because the Holy Ghost, He has foresight in our life. He knows, He recognizes, amen, He knows the culture. And so when the Holy Ghost begins to work in our life, and He's built the conviction, He foresees it, that there's deception, amen. He, he, he foresees it, that things aren't always the way that they appear. And so we've got to live within the boundaries of it all. It's easy, and I'm wrapping things up at see time. It's easy to compromise our convictions because we fear criticism. None of us like to be criticized. No one wants to be the last one standing and feeling alone. But it's not about the feelings of criticism. It's about the feeling of conviction that the Holy Ghost has placed in our heart that overrides any thought of criticism. People are scared of rejection. They live by godly convictions. We might not be accepted by others. It's better to live for Christ and follow His ways because there is what we inherit. God's best for us. <coughs> so God, may my life be lived by your conviction. Fear of loss. Sometimes people are reluctant to stand. But our priorities have to be our convictions. So that when life has been lived, we can say, I've been faithful to the word of God. Do you get in God's word every day? Do you get there and dig and look and find the principles for a living? Because most of the church doesn't. I'm out there, folks. I'm out there with folks that claim to be Christians, but I cannot tell you the last time that they picked up the Word of God. We've got to live by the convictions of God's Word. Amen. It has to be something that is nailed down in the depth of our heart because we've prayed it through. Amen. We've taken it to God in prayer. We've read it. We've examined it. We've allowed the Holy Ghost to work through it and speak to us. Amen. Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. Amen. Let's live by God's Word and not grieving Him. Who cares what loss is? Who cares what, what criticism is or rejection? Amen. I, want, I don't want to grieve God's Holy Spirit. Spirit. We've forgotten about that in our lives. <coughs> because we live life to ourselves too often. What we should be concerned with is believers. How does the Spirit of God respond to this? They can say you're narrow minded. They can say you're legalistic. They can call you all types of names and say you need to be more open. But if God's word says it, we need to be living yet. It's not a preference. It is a conviction. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you, we need to get conviction in our life of our preference. What are the convictions that are truly from the Word of God? Not your preference. A conviction. And we need to live with it. I feel happy for the church. I want us to be a church that lives by conviction. Tonight, 
it is heavy because it's a requirement. Peter and John displayed it well. It doesn't matter. Your conviction will never override the conviction of the Holy Ghost. So we will not stop talking about Jesus. You need to be convinced of what you believe and why. So that you can share the gospel of Jesus Christ with others. Could I ask us just together tonight very quietly and soberly but sincerely if there are things that you're struggling with in your Christian walk would you say God would you give me conviction from the word of God it's time we get past our preferences and we find the truth of God's word so that we can have a foundation that can be built upon let's gather into